Maggie, so tell us what kind of jurist is Trump putting on, President Trump putting on the court? President Trump has been appointing federal judges who have been persons of high intellect, high integrity, and people who are applying the rule of law faithfully. This is absolutely critical because, look, we don't want judges who will use their position as a way to enact the political policy outcomes they like. We want people who will apply the rule of law faithfully and who will be faithful to the original meaning of the Constitution, and that's exactly what the president has been doing. Now, Tom, President Trump has been very concerted in this effort. We've got a full screen of the number of appellate judges confirmed in the first year of each administration. Uh, Donald Trump has a dozen. His predecessors, whether it's Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Richard Nixon, John F. Kennedy, have not reached that number. Is, is this a product of an intentional focus on saying, hey, the, the, the judiciary, for better or for worse, has been shaping the future of our country, and if we want to maintain fidelity to the Constitution, we've got to put young, young guys and gals who understand the Constitution in these courts as fast as possible. Pete, that's exactly right. This did not happen by happenstance. This was a concerted plan that the administration had to hit the ground running from day one. As you noted, they've achieved this with record-breaking success, filling these vacancies at a fast pace. They are people who are smart. In many cases, they are young, and they will serve for many years. That's one of the wonderful things about appointing federal judges if you're a president, is that they will often be the most lasting part of your legacy, and that their service on the bench will endure far beyond your actual time in office. So the president is putting his mark on the federal courts, and I think we're just getting started. So, Tom, tell us what, what exactly the Democrats did that made it so easy for, for President Trump to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was, as we saw during the Obama administration, they started off at a reasonably fast pace and filling judicial vacancies, but that pace slackened a little bit over time. Part of it was because the Obama White House didn't move as quickly as they needed to. In other cases, it was because Republicans held firm on the nomination process. And through a combination of these factors, what happened is you saw President Trump inherit a very large number of vacancies. And what is wonderful to see is that this administration has not been sitting back on its heels, but has been moving quickly and forcefully and decisively to fill these open spots. Right, but there was a filibuster rule, I'm sorry, there was a filibuster rule that was changed that also made it easier, correct? That, that's exactly right. That would make it easier in the past for senators, individual senators, to frustrate a president's attempts to put people on the bench. The Democrats several years back basically blew that up. And the consequences we're seeing now is that it's enabling President Trump to move his nominees far more quickly than a president could have in the past. No, it's a great point. I mean, it's the combination of a president actually willing to do things and the right. Federalist Society and a, a more mature conservative judicial standpoint uh, coming together and getting stuff done. Tom Dupree, thanks a lot for your time this morning. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Well, coming up, the new proof that the next generation is already learning to disrespect America. The celebrity actually brought to tears of joy because her son sat for the national anthem. And that late night fast food run is the surefire solution to avoiding this year's hangover, right? <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. The five ways you can avoid tomorrow's headache. Coming up next. Help me. Help me. <laughs> this is research. Lord, we're having a good time. Family and friends, but how do you keep your head from ringing in the morning? <laughs> Very important question. Good Nutritionist question. Carolyn Brown is here with what you can do today to prevent tomorrow's hangover. So there's drinking and then there's planned drinking, and you're going to help <laughs> Absolutely. us. Absolutely, yeah. And so we want to start with actually more drinking. You want to have a one-to-one -one rule. So that means one water for every alcoholic drink. So one water to every wine, and seltzer absolutely counts, too. Like in real time? Like have one, have I one? Ideally, or? yes. But should, one should you one. hydrate a lot beforehand? Yeah, so it, exactly. So if, you're, if that's not possible for you, then drink a liter of water before you go out. Okay. Yeah, my friend used to drink like a whole thing of Gatorade before mm -hmm. going out. Although if you're Did at Times Square and you can't go to the bathroom, yeah. that's a problem. But, yeah, right. I got it. <laughs> That's a whole other category. <laughs> what about the sugary drinks, the Coke and the juice? Yeah, the sugary drinks actually the are what are champagne. responsible for a lot of migraines, actually. So if you if you can do seltzer and a splash of one of these things, you're going to be much better off tomorrow. Okay. okay. And what about snacking? I mean, everybody says if yeah. you snack, if totally. you eat, um, you know, that's the way the Europeans do it, right? Yeah, so a lot, of times, yeah. And a lot of times... Listen to those Europeans. Oh, whatever. Opening things up. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of times appetizers sort of take over instead of having a real meal. So I 
really want you to focus That's on have idea. a real meal tonight. Don't, you know, sort of pick a little this, a little that. It doesn't end up equaling a full meal, and you're much more likely to get hungry. you got to build a, a base, bit. what you're saying. Exactly. You want to have, build have a something strong in there. drinking base. <laughs> and you're, you're thinking, lasagna, you want to put it that way. Lasagna. Yeah, ideally, ideally steak, some chicken, some, some fish, protein. a little bit of green, and a little okay. bit of grain. I don't know where we get the good stuff like this so early on a Sunday. <laughs> I've never seen anything as healthy as this on the it's show. Really, I actually oh, no. thought this was somebody's <laughs> breakfast. I, there's the no, no part of it wanted to have that. <laughs> no, Pete's been eating the French fries, which we also yeah. uh, which we also have So what's here. wrong? With, so so this, yeah. not the, yeah, the so you don't McDonald's actually, cheeseburgers. Yeah, and we're not going to eat them now either. <laughs> or maybe, uh, <laughs> but really, don't, if you put it out, you'll <laughs> eat it. <laughs> well, contrary but to popular this, belief, this, this stuff, help? it doesn't actually soak up alcohol really? the way you think it does. It's just going to make you feel a little bit icky in the morning. Look at this how porous it is. I mean. There's, this doesn't help at all? <laughs> no, it's not really going to help for breakfast either. And then, unfortunately. Well, we'll see. Okay, he, so can, he can test because he's got the. I do have a question because you're a nutritionist. You know a lot about health. I, I have heard people who take like uh, aspirin or Tylenol yeah. as a sort of preventive hangover. Yeah, you really want to do it after. You know, the, the next morning is fine, but you don't want to take it while drinking. Um, it can lead to stomach issues and sure, liver that. issues too. So it's really, really dangerous to take while you drinking. You also say pick your number. What does that mean? Yeah. I want you to name your number. Choose how many drinks you're going to have ahead of time. So is it going to be two? Is it going to be one. three? Choose it ahead of time. <laughs> and you're much more nine. likely to stick to that and not fall for the, you know, just one more. Right. I think that's, that's a smart idea. That's Plan smart ahead. Idea. More difficult to actually do. Yeah. Execution is a, is a whole other thing, whole but we're talking about the planning piece. What about exercise like tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Yes. Try to sweat it out. Plan, plan a way to kick off the new year in a great way. So what about eating greasy food in the morning? Because I've always been a believer yeah. of that. Greasy in food the, the next morning. day. We know. The next day. We know. Yeah, it, I mean, people are going to do that no matter what, but you want to actually have eggs. Eggs are a great one to um, help with hangovers, too. They have some compounds in it that help break down alcohol toxins. I like that. All so right. have a little water, less sugar. Less eat sugar. A good, eat a good, eat. Get a good base in there. Yeah, and, uh, real hydrate. Meal. You would say hydrate's so the number one, though, right? Hydrate's absolutely the number Got one it. thing. The majority of hangover symptoms are because of dehydration. Awesome. Right. All right. Brown. Yeah. Good Thank information. You Thank you. Happy Thanks New for having year. me. Happy Just New Year. Just the most important info you'll get on the show today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sorry to ruin From hangovers to the wall. <laughs> No wall, no deal for the dreamers. President Trump laying out his demands for DACA. Are we one step closer to building that wall? And caught on camera, a suspect the cops never saw coming. The bizarre police call that involves a squirrel and some cookies. <laughs> Nothing but hard-hitting news. Right <laughs> Not from New York, but from New Zealand. But we do still have a few hours left. 2017 here in the U.S. It is truly incredible to think of how much we have accomplished on our journey together. Two million jobs. The stock market is at an all-time high. Massive tax cuts. Our border is now strong. Enthusiasm is booming. Frigid cold will make for dangerous conditions for anyone planning to be outdoors to ring in the new year. The NYPD says there is no specific credible threat to Times Square or to New York City. The NYPD is making a statement. And they're saying, not tonight, not on my watch. And if you come, we're ready. A Fox News alert. The growing protests in Iran now turning deadly as well, but the president chiming in on this. He says the entire world understands that the good people of Iran want change. The president tweeting, I use social media, not because I like to, but because it is the only way to fight a very dishonest and unfair press. The lack of respect that they have for the office and the president of the United States is uncharted. I want to wish every American a very happy new year. This is the actual ball, guys. We have the best seat in the house all morning long. We're in the studio today with Pete, with Peter Ducey, with Pete, Pete Hegseth. Yep. Pete. I'm in a Pete sandwich Pete. here. <laughs> Whether she likes it or not. By the way, we just did a segment a minute ago on uh, hangovers. The only thing that she didn't mention to cure a hangover was not drinking too much, right? That's, that's true. We never covered that. <laughs> if you so want to not drink it. for this new year, you know where you can go? You can go to, you can go to Times Square right now in uh, five degrees and not use a bathroom and not have a drink for 12 hours. Uh, I got a news flash for you. Those people are still <laughs> drinking. They just they, have they, it hidden. They just find a way to kind of tuck it away. 
Normally, though, it's not until New Year's morning when people say they're never going to drink again. That's true. Yeah. Well, happy <laughs> almost New Year. We've been asking you for your resolutions, which we all set and most of us never follow through on. But, you know, 2018 is a new year. And Gordy in Maine tweeted this, saying, or sent this into Facebook, I'm going to continue my weight loss. I lost 50 pounds Good in 2017. Good for you, Gordy. Right on. All right, an email from Sherry. She said, accept what is. Let go of what was. Have faith in what will be. It's kind of like the frozen thing. Let it go. I right? like it. I like and it. And then I like Chuck, it. read more scripture. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. I, what is your new, <laughs> new Year's resolution, Peter? Uh, yeah. Buy more Bitcoin, get more <laughs> tattoos, tweet more, and uh, love America. <laughs> He's wow. not kidding. I'm actually not kidding. What you know? Sounds like get Trump. After it. Sounds like Trump's New Year's resolution. Get after it. Get in the fight. You know? I'm just just don't back down. More on the throttle. That's okay. the way to go. How about you, Peter? I just all that. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll copy paste that. Yeah. You're gonna tweet more, Peter? I uh, maybe. Good time to start. <laughs> Why not? Yep. Are you, yeah, Why you're not? on Twitter. You're on the tweets. I'm gonna try. I'm Twitter, gonna try and yes. exercise more. Exercise more. See, that's yeah, a very I'm not prudent. consistent, and traveling back and forth makes me not as consistent, and so I need to do that. So it's keep difficult. emailing us your resolutions. We'll try and get them up on the board. There. That's right. We want to, We will check them out all morning long. We're going to check in right now with Rick Reichmuth, who's live atop Times Square, right in front of the ball that will drop in uh, T-minus more Hi, hours Rick. than I can count. Rick, good morning. Good morning, guys. You know that when you go up about 400 feet, it gets a lot colder. Once you go higher up in the air, the wind kicks up a little bit. The temperature goes down a little bit. So it's certainly a very chilly morning out here. But not just here. It's a chilly morning almost everywhere across the country, except for far south Florida and uh, parts of the southwest, California and Arizona. In fact, Phoenix area has been seeing record-breaking high temperatures. So if you're wondering where all the heat is, it's down across parts of the southwest. Certainly nowhere else uh, right now. We've got a really a dangerously cold night tonight. We've been talking all week long about the temperatures here in Times Square. Square tonight. We're going to be somewhere in the 10 to 13 degree range. But as you said, if you're standing out here for that long, it doesn't take long until it gets cold. I will tell you, we have a warm spot we can go to here. But the second we're out here for five or six minutes, it starts to get really cold. So uh, you better dress accordingly. Try not to drink too much uh, because that will make you make some bad choices and probably not notice if you're going into some bad state, physical state, hypothermia or something like that. So that's my advice. It's going to be very cold all morning long. We're right here. We are uh, are going to be talking to the people from the Waterford Crystals, finding out about the new crystal that they have on uh, the ball this year, as well as, um, uh, oh my gosh, there we go. I just That's what's happening, guys. Rick, you start to lose what's going on. Brain freeze. So cold. It's brain yeah. freeze. It is a brain freeze. It's the brain freeze. It's so cool. so, it's just, the synapses oh yeah, the are USO. just not We've got the USO <laughs> singers here. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's never happened to me before on TV, by the way. It, the 2018, totally 2018 is a new year, Rick. You know, you gotta, you gotta get a clean yes, slate. Exactly. <laughs> Good man. Look at that. He's <laughs> visibly freezing. Yeah, it looks He's thinking cold. about Times Square. Yeah. Think again. And I hadn't thought about that. He's right. He's up higher. It's probably even colder than it is oh when you're standing on the sidewalk. So. Terrible. Well, if you uh, if you open up your on a Sunday edition of the New York Times, which the president has labeled the failing New York Times, you'll see an anonymously sourced article this morning. Uh, it said how the Russian inquiry began a campaign aide drinks and talks d talk and talk of political dirt. Here's a here's part of the article from the New York Times. It says during a night of heavy drinking at an upscale London bar in May of 2016, George Papadopoulos, a young foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign, made a startling revelation to Australia's top diplomat in Britain. Russia had political dirt on Hillary Clinton. About three weeks earlier, Mr. Papadopoulos had been told that Moscow had thousands of emails that would embarrass Mrs. Clinton, apparently stolen in an effort to try to damage her campaign. So the New York Times is sort of laying this out mm. as the nexus and the beginning of the Russia investigation. So it was a drunken conversation from a more than low level outside advisor to the Trump campaign that apparently triggered this entire Russia, 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 of course, accelerated by a fake dossier paid for by the Democrats paying Russians. So this is this is what it comes to. Anonymous sourcing articles right. in the New York Times about drunken conversations. And the, t and the timing is really interesting because really people are, were starting to get very upset. The American people, the 
Congress that we didn't get the information from the FBI um, and the DOJ about the source of the DOJ of the of the dirty dossier. So sure. who paid for that? Did uh, it, we know the DNC did, but the FBI seems to not answer the question. They haven't about, yet. They haven't. They refuse to answer that question. So you wonder, did they drop this story? Are the anonymous sources in the New York Times from the FBI, from the DOJ? Are they trying to really distract um, from the fact? And, and one last thing, uh, Peter, if if the DOJ uh, or if this story did not start with the dirty dossier, uh, why aren't they turning over the documents that the House Intelligence Committee has asked for? Seems kind of sneaky to me. Right. And we still don't know how accurate everything that Papadopoulos said. That's right. But we do know, of course, that everybody who's drunk at a bar always tells the <laughs> truth. They never exaggerate. Uh, sure. But this doesn't mean that the FBI still did not use that dossier sure. that is still unverified to get a FISA warrant to then spy on members of the Trump campaign. It does mean, though, that a very, very expensive, possibly historic special counsel probe may have a nexus here. However, uh, something else curious about these sources, Anonymous, uh, we keep being told no leaks from the Mueller probe. We're not going to get any leaks. Isn't he the key witness for them? He's or he them. is a key witness? So Absolutely. where is this stuff coming from? Obviously, somewhere that the New York Times thinks that they can trust it. You're exactly right. And it, we know their their sources that they trust that they trust are limited, and I'm sure uh, Bob Mueller is the gold standard of a source they would trust on a leak, no doubt. I mean, but it, it, to, to the article, it doesn't say a night of drinking. It says a night of heavy drinking, which is journalistic code for he's probably drunk uh, at a bar talking to someone, spouting off because he's not a senior. George Papadopoulos, I don't know him at all, but everyone is validated. This guy was never a senior member of the team, barely right. on the periphery, always trying to impress his bosses. A young guy trying to cook up schemes of doing this or doing that to, to, to be more relevant. Why wouldn't he be at a bar bragging about what he may or may not know? And how in the world could that be the trigger? But you're right, it, it very well could be. That combined with all the other aspects, including the dossier, uh, could lead to the, 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 uh, the nexus of this investigation, which is the irony of the whole thing. This, this investigation, which has gone nowhere and showed no collusion, may be based on that. Right, Maybe. and even, and we'll even if it were true, Saying that uh, you heard that the, the Russians were spying on her emails, I mean, that doesn't n mean necessarily that there was any collusion on the part of the Trump campaign. It means you maybe heard that. And, uh, you know, maybe the reason after a year of investigating that they don't have any evidence of collusion is because the star witnesses can't remember what they said. That's right. <laughs> well, let's get, straight to, let's get straight to your headlines right now. We sure. have a Fox News alert. A live look in Times Square where the NYPD is beefing up security as one million people prepare to ring in the new year. Snipers will keep watch from above as officers on the ground close off streets, check bags, deploy bomb sniffing dogs. Now, earlier, former New York chief investigator uh, Steve Cardian explained why they're taking unprecedented measures. You can't prevent everything. There is always going to be evil people. If something happens, they're going to minimize the damage that it, it causes. And it will likely be uh, at one of the entrances. And On the Las Vegas Strip, snipers and the National Guard will protect thousands of New Year's partiers. The man police say led cops to a fake hostage situation that ended with another man's death has done this before. We've just learned that 25-year-old Tyler Barris reported a fake bomb threat to a California news station back in 2015. That, as we get our first listen at this week's alleged swatting call, which led to the police shooting and killing of a 28-year-old Andrew Finch. I'm thinking about, because um, I already poured gasoline all over the house, I might just set it on fire. Okay, well, we don't need to do that, okay? Do you have my address correct? Police also releasing body cam footage of the shooting. Finch's family saying they want both Barris and the officer held accountable. Online reports suggest that Barris had an argument over a video game with another person not related to Finch. Right. Faculty and staff at Lake Superior University in Michigan releasing their 43rd annual list of Spanish words for misuse, overuse, and general uselessness. And this year's top vote getting should sound familiar. It's all fake news. It's phony stuff. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> fake news. That's right. It's fake
fake news. This year's tongue in cheek list also includes Cafefe and Nothing Burger. <laughs> and those are your headlines. I like both those words, by the way. <laughs> of course, yeah. I love Cafefe. Cafefe? You can apply to anything. And Is Trump. Cafefe or Cafefe? We still haven't said that. Cafefe, but. Yeah. Trump it's said. It's very French. Of it's very Cafefe. French. That he Cafefe. tweets a lot because he considers most of the mainstream media to be essentially garbage. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and now we have a nice segue to this story. The New York Times has an op ed where the writer talks to several different great women guy. about their <laughs> life experiences, and they have all concluded uh, that none of it will lead them to want to ever take out the trash. That has to be a job for the man. They don't care if that is something from the 1950s. They're not going to do it. There are a list of reasons. Some people just don't like uh, the mess. Some people don't like the trash juices. The smell. The smell. The weight. But doesn't matter. Man's got to do it. <laughs> yeah, man's got to take a, out the trash and shovel line. the snow. Everyone's got a red line. Taking out the trash, ask, that's still a man's job, even for the liberal coastal elite, because they're better than us, they're liberal coastal elite. But it turns out <laughs> they're just like us. It's kind of like celebrities, just like us. <laughs> just like us. And, and the people that they talk to are from Brooklyn, Manhattan, Portland, San Francisco. Mm. Not necessarily right. just a... Total yeah, representative. representative so it turns out that the uh, New York, uh, you know, housewives also tell their their, you know, husbands, you better take out the trash. We're all the same, you and uh, and we appreciate it. you men for doing keep, that. Keep sending us your emails. We're going to read a few later on in the uh, email. We're going to read a few later on in the program at friends at foxnews.com. But in the meantime, we're moving on. And we've got this: no wall, no deal for the dreamers. President Trump laying out his demands for DACA. Is this what it's going to take for the wall to get built? A deal tweeting, the Democrats have been told and they fully understand that there can be no DACA without the desperately needed wall at the southern border and an end to the horrible chain migration and ridiculous system, lottery system of immigration, etc. We must protect our country at all cost. So is the president on the verge of his next major deal? Mark Kerkorian is the executive director of the Center for Immigration Studies, and he joins us now to weigh in. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. So why is it, I know that on Wednesday, the Democrats and the Republicans are going to get together at the White House to talk about DACA. Why do Republicans need the Democrats if they still have control of the House and the Senate and the White House? Why don't they just try to do it like they just did tax reform with only well, Republicans? Because in the Senate, there's still the filibuster. The tax bill is, it's, there's, a, the, there's a kind of parliamentary rules where you can move financial measures through with only 51 votes. This would require 60 votes in the Senate, and so they're going to need some Democrat buy-in. But the reason for this package is not just horse trading. It's not the White House saying, okay, Democrats, you want the amnesty, we want this, let's make a deal. Laws are made like that all the time, nothing wrong with it, but that's not what's happening here. You need to have enforcement uh, elements like the wall and other things and get rid of the chain migration in order to limit the damage caused by an amnesty. Because if you amnesty people, first thing that happens is more illegal immigrants want to come because they say, hey, look, you know, these people made it. We want to as well. Sure. The other thing is a few years down the road, the former illegal immigrants then can sponsor their family members. And you've, that's what chain migration is. So you need to fix those two things as part of the deal as um, sort of damage control. Because if you just amnesty sure. these uh, people with DACA, you're going to end up with more illegal immigration and more chain migration well, unless Mark, you do something about Mark, it. Mark, of course. I mean, if the Republicans just did a DACA deal and get, didn't get anything for it, not only would it be terrible politically, but it would be really bad policy. So right. do you believe they can get a fully funded border wall and the end of chain migration? They are the majority. They have the presidency in exchange for a DACA deal that progressives are more or less obsessed with. Well, we'll we're going to see. Um, the question is, are they going to stick to their guns or are they going to cave when Senator Schumer in the Senate says no, no deal? Do the, you know, really, the real question is, was well, two questions. Will the president stick to his guns? I think he will. Mm -hmm. But are the Democrats willing to let these DACA work permits expire and these people become illegal immigrants again? rather than give in to some of these pretty reasonable demands, 
I think the Democrats may be willing to just play politics with this issue and let all of those people lose their work permits and lose their jobs when the Republicans in the White House are saying, look, we're actually okay with amnestying this special group of people sure. in exchange for things to limit the damage. So it's going to be the Democrats, maybe, who will sink this potential amnesty for these uh, DACA work permit people. Mark, if the GOP in Congress caves and they agree to a deal with the Democrats that does not include a fully funded border wall, do you think the conservatives there are going to start to move to get rid of Paul Ryan as Speaker, Mitch McConnell as the Majority Leader? Yeah, it could be. Uh, I think, though, it's, yeah, in the Senate is where the fight's going to be. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Speaker Ryan and Mitch McConnell are going to be taking their cues from the White House. Because if the president says, I'm going to veto this if it doesn't have what I want, then, you know, they may actually say, okay, it sort of strengthens their resolve. So sure. if they cave, yeah, it's definitely, especially for Ryan, it's going to be a real headache for and him politically. That's already been signaled for sure. Mark Krikorian, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, re freedom of religion rejected. The bakery refusing to make a cake for a same-sex wedding. Losing a lawsuit and their livelihood at the same time, the family now being forced to shut down their business. They break their silence live with us next. And caught on camera, a suspect the cops never saw coming. The bizarre police call that involved. That's how many people around the world will be watching the ball drop in Times Square on television. Next, 3,000. That's how many pounds of confetti will be dropping at midnight. The confetti released from the rooftops of buildings throughout Times Square creating that classic celebratory blizzard. And finally, 50 tons. That's how much, that's roughly how much debris will be picked up during the massive cleanup after New Year's Eve festivities. It is disgusting, but they get after it very quickly. Rachel, over to you. All right, freedom of religion rejected over a cake. Christian bakers lost their business after being ordered to pay a $135,000 fine because they stuck to their religious beliefs, refusing to bake a, uh, bake a cake for a lesbian uh, wedding back in 2013. The Oregon Appeals Court ruling the bakery was in the wrong for discriminating based on sexual orientation. Now, joining us for their first interview since the ruling are the former owners of the Sweet Cakes by Melissa Bakery, Aaron and and Melissa Klein, and they are joined by Michael Berry of the Liberty Institute, who is representing them. Thank you both for being here. So you lost your business. Um, you had to pay a restitution of $135,000, including a tithing account of 10% that you labeled uh, for God. Um, so why do you think you weren't able to pursue, uh, to uh, persuade the judge in this case um, to, to rule on your, on your behalf? I mean, I personally couldn't say why we couldn't persuade the judges in this case. Um, I don't know their reasoning behind it. I just know that this is one step in the process. It's disappointing, but uh, we're going to continue to move forward. How has it affected your, your business and also your family finances? Um, well, it's, it's definitely been, you know, hard on our family. It's taken a toll on our family. Um, but, you know, I can say, too, though, that God is so good, and he's been taking care of us. So, You have children. I understand that they've been bullied in school as well. Um, you know, we uh, haven't had a whole lot of that. We do homeschool our kids. Um, this kind of affected that a little bit, but um, we decided for many reasons to pull them out of school and homeschool them. Okay, Michael, why do you think that the judge did not rule in their favor? Well, if you look at the court's opinion, which is available at firstliberty.org for people who want to read it themselves, uh, one of the things that the court said was they didn't think that custom designing and making a custom wedding cake is a form of art. And, of course, we just heard the Supreme Court talk about this, uh, a similar issue, not too long ago. And, you know... As the ACLU themselves said, uh, freedom of expression for ourselves means we have to allow freedom of expression for others. Right. And Aaron and Melissa Klein just want the same basic treatment that everybody else in this country wants and deserves. Could, could this backfire on liberals? I mean, could say, for example, a liberal speechwriter be compelled to write for a, a, a conservative speech for a conservative politician? I mean, is this a slippery slope that might not just affect religious people? 
Absolutely. You know, punishing people for their religious beliefs is, is wrong. It's un-American. And if you take this court's opinion and you really you know, look at what it truly means for not just religious liberty, but freedom of speech and the First Amendment in this country, it absolutely could be extended that far. Uh, because it really falls to what do these judges, who in their own subjective opinions think constitutes uh, expression or art. And they said, look, we even concede and acknowledge that Melissa custom designs these cakes. She puts her own independent stamp on every cake. But we just don't think that that's art. That was their opinion. And they said because of that, it's not protected by the First Amendment. That's outrageous. Now, I understand that the, um, the lesbian couple actually claimed that they experienced physical harm um, by, by uh, Melissa um, and Aaron. Uh, they said they experienced, um, you know, weight gain. Um, they even said they felt mentally raped. Yeah, I, I mean, look, in this country, if we're going to be a truly diverse and pluralistic country that tolerates all points of view, then as, as the Supreme Court recently uh, opined, you know, tolerance is a two-way street. Uh, what about what's happened to Aaron and Melissa Klein and their family and the fact that this $135,000 penalty has forced them to close their business? I mean, that's, that's harmful not only to Aaron and Melissa Klein, but really to all Americans because that means the government can now force us under threat of massive penalties to, to say things that go against our religious beliefs. And that's just wrong. Well, Melissa, Aaron, uh, Michael, all of you have been a great example um, of standing up for our Constitution, our religious liberty. I know that you've received lots of, as you said before, lots of support around the country from others who are standing up, also are thrilled that you're standing up for religious liberty. Um, so thank you for, for being here. We wish you the best. I hope you still get to bake um, coming in the new <laughs> year. And we wish all the best for you and your family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, coming up new proof of the next generation that it's already learning to disrespect America, the celebrity who actually was brought to tears of joy because her son sat in sat for the national anthem. And we're getting ready for 2018 with the best champagne for any budget and last minute appetizers and desserts. And Rick is live atop the square with us right now. Rick. Hey guys, we have the USO performers who are trying to like stay warm up here at Top Times Square. They're going to be performing in a second. We'll see. Give your warm voices warm. That's what we need. Coming up here in a minute. Stay with us right back. It's your shot in the morning. At first glance, you may not recognize that table, but this is a military family together for the holidays. The Miranda family, if you remember, sharing this photo with their son, Elwin, Elwin who is serving overseas in the Navy in Japan, and the group, a hero's welcome, thanks to them, was able to make it happen. Remember this? He's actually not in Japan. He's actually on 6th Avenue. Surprises. <laughs> <laughs> you may remember that very special Christmas military surprise happening right here on Fox and Friends. And here's the Miranda family having a blast on their trip to Florida together. Look at that, hitting up a little That's Disneyland fun. there. Good stuff. They never thought it would happen. But awesome. thanks to the good folks here at Fox and Friends, it did happen. It Pretty did. Cool. Good for you guys. Turning now to your headlines. New overnight, South Korea seizing a Panama flag bearing ship suspected of smuggling oil to North Korea amid heavy UN sanctions. This after just revealing that in late November, a Hong Kong flag vessel was believed to have done the same. Meantime, Russia is denying reports that its tankers smuggled fuel to the rogue nation, which relies on their products for its missile and nuclear programs. A man under arrest accused of wanting to join ISIS and trying to destroy the evidence. According to court documents, Sean Andrew Duncan expressed interest in making homemade bombs and carrying out an attack in the U.S. The feds say he tried to destroy a thumb drive and a memory chip when agents showed up at his Virginia home. He is charged with attempting to obstruct terrorism investigation. Will and Grace star Deborah Messing praising her son for sitting during the national anthem at a hockey game. Messing describing how emotional she felt over his decision to protest posting this quote, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Her son saying, quote, mom, I want to stand, sit down and protest. Can we do that? She responds, yes, honey, we can do that. 
Who's crying? I'm not crying. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Wow. Cops called in after a crazy squirrel breaks into a home and steals cookie from, cookies from the kitchen. What happens next is hilarious. Oh my God. Jumping right on top of one of the officers in upstate New York. It then ran out of the kitchen where police eventually caught it and set it outside where it is now free. So if you're ever walking by a life. tree and you think, I wonder if that squirrel's going to come lunging at me. It just yeah, might. Yeah, they kind of fly. And if you're a cop, you're like, hey, what's going to happen today? Maybe yeah. I'll have to capture a squirrel. <laughs> All right, we're going to check in now with Rick Reichmuth live from Times Square. The ball is just hours away from being dropped. And Rick, you are in the center of it all. He's with the USO Performance Troupe, Rick. I know. Yeah, I like. Yes, an amazing morning here, and it's so uh, such an honor for us to have you guys here. You guys are USO Troops. You guys do such amazing work performing for our troops. How many performances do you guys do a year? Over 400 performances every year, globally. Globally. So you guys travel around the world uh, keeping our troops' uh, spirits up, basically. Is that yep. the mission? Yeah, keeping them connected to their home, to their family, and to their country through entertainment while they're over serving our great country. Yeah, and there's 64 of you. You're in different groups, so moving around all over the place. Yep. And you guys are all performers. Like, your voices are spectacular. Yep, we're all based here in New York City. That's amazing. All right, so I'm, I'm going to back off here and let you guys sing real quickly. Okay, okay so do, you, do your thing for us. First you fight for the right and to build a nation's might. Anchors away, my boys. Senpei Parachus is our guide. From the halls of we go into the wild blue yonder. This is America. America. Okay, how many songs did you just pack into that 30 second medley? Five songs. That was amazing. All right, your name's Brandon. Yep. And everybody else's name, real quick. Yeah, we have Courtney, Zoe, Amandina, and Jeremy. All right, hey, thank you guys so much for being here uh, today. You guys are performing tonight as well. Yeah, 802 will be on the countdown stage. Amazing, wonderful. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Happy New Year. Pete, we'll send it back to you. Rick, thanks a lot. Next time, just have them do the Army song. We appreciate it. Thanks, Rick. All right, for those <laughs> planning on toasting the New Year, our next guest compiled a list of the best champagnes to fit any budget. Joining me now is champagne expert Megan Libby. So it wouldn't be New Year's Eve without champagne. That's right. I can guarantee two things this New Year's Eve. The ball will drop and the corks will pop. Definitely. And if the corks are going to pop, it better be real champagne from Champagne France. From Champagne France. That's why it's called champagne. Everything else is just sparkling, sparkling wine, wine, right? That's so, right. okay, you've got an array here for us. Explain. That's right. Well, let's start with the champagne of success and glamour. This is Moet and Chandon. And with champagne, size matters. Okay. Guess what? I'll take the little Minis guy. Minis are real. And this is a sipper. You can drink right it's out a, of it. a sipper. I've never seen that before. Don't That's you fantastic. love it? This is yeah, the Moet sipper. Cheers. cheers. Mm -hmm. So, Moet, how much is that going to run you? These little sippers are only $12 a bottle. You can get a six-pack or a case. Then, of course, a great option is a Magnum. Both Vauve Clicquot and the Moet and Chandon come in Magnums. So the Moet, that's going to be about $10 a person. This will serve 10 people. Love it. And the, the, the uh, I don't even know how to say it. How do I say Vauve. it? Vauve. Vauve I, say, I call it Vauve, but it's basically the Dom Perignon of the people, right? Yeah, this is America's it's favorite champagne. And Vauve means widow. And it rhymes with love. So if you ever forget. I love it. How about these other three? Help us out. So let's talk a little bit about rosé. Dispel some myths. People think rosé is going to be sweet, right? These are not. On the label, you'll see, have a look, it says brute. That means it's going to be dry. Mm -hmm. And because it has Pinot Noir in the blend, it's going to go great with things like filet mignon, tuna tartare, carpaccio. Love it for your dinner. Yeah. How about Dom Perignon? How much will this will a bottle run you? A bottle of Dom Perignon for this iconic champagne, one hundred and sixty-nine dollars. It's an investment. It's yeah. an investment, but, but it's this that good. is a vintage only from the greatest vineyards in the whole region. It's a global icon for a reason. It sure is. How about this last one, real quick? Ten so seconds. So Krug is your luxury champagne for the collector out there. It takes twenty years to craft a bottle of Krug. And what would that go for? 169 as oh, well. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so either one of them. That's right. Well, cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Where's my bottle? That's right. your bottle. Well, I missed my bottle, but I'm going to go over to Rachel and Peter while I enjoy my bottle. And if you're going to do out. that, you got to eat first. As we heard that earlier, we Diane Hendricks is a chef and culinary nutritionist. She joins us now with some last-minute cocktails, appetizers, and desserts for your New Year's Eve 
party. So. That's right. I'm really excited about this because even if you haven't already planned one, you're saying all of this can be done in about 15 minutes. Each thing can be made in under 15 minutes. And on New Year's Eve, a lot of people don't really make plans. Things are up yeah, in the air and the people want to come over. So I did some cocktails, some appetizers, and some desserts, and some appetizers. So okay. start with the cocktail. You want to start with the appetizers? Well, I was really excited about this because you mentioned that you never know if your guest has a peanut allergy. You can do this with Sun, sun butter. Sun butter. It's and awesome. What is it? It's awesome. It's actually a sunflower butter. And right. these, this is my grandmother used to make these. Okay. She used to make them with peanut butter. It's literally I've dates. I've seen it with peanut I always see oh it with gosh. blue cheese. Or... No, dates with sun butter. And then you just watch this. You just dip it into the sunflower seeds and roll it in sugar. Look how beautiful they look. Gorgeous. They're healthy. Awesome. It's delicious. Right. And it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome. And we also have some um, oh, cheesecake. Oh, isn't that delicious? delicious? Little mini no-bake cheesecake jars. We've got um, some popcorn with chocolate drizzled on it, spice nuts. And this is actually a um, cranberry applesauce cobbler that I used the frozen cranberry and, and applesauce I had from Thanksgiving and then just made a quick cobbler. Easy. And what about the drinks? Those look like some... New Year's They're Eve's awesome. Well, first of all, Peter's Pete's coming over. Let's start with the <laughs> well. Let's start with the wines. I've got Gnarly Head Chardonnay, which is nine ninety nine a bottle. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's got cantaloupe and citrus notes. It's wonderful. And then we've got the Noble Vine six six seven Pinot Noir, which is really awesome. And that's got like plum and uh, Bing cherry. It's really great. Mm -hmm. And that's fourteen ninety nine. So you're getting. High quality wine at a superior price. That um, smells awesome. Looks and smells. I knew fantastic. you were coming over, so and everything has alcohol, so you'll be happy. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we have a poinsettia, which is cranberry. It's a just Love cranberry it. juice, a little triple sec or cointreau, champagne or prosecco, and this is a pomegranate margarita. That's absolutely wonderful. This I made my own homemade gingerbread syrup. This is a gingerbread old fashioned, and it's really great. It's made with bourbon. Love you'll love that. All and right. then we have a. Um, Make it to midnight martini. It's got espresso, <laughs> some coffee ice cream, and um, a little bit of uh, Ooh, coffee liqueur. I want to get okay. to the these appetizers because they look so good. And they're under, so easy. under it 10 minutes. That smells really good. That I is really, I just came up with adding strawberries and fruit to feta. So it's like a feta strawberry dip that's delicious. You just throw some vegetables Try around that. it. Yeah. That's just an egg frittata. It takes nothing to make. Yeah, you throw it in the easy. oven. Super simple. You ever think of ravioli or tortellini? You just that's boil it up. That's such a great idea. Yeah, toss well, it with a little bit of high quality olive oil, mm -hmm. some red pepper flakes, and some really good Parmigiano Reggiano, and it's just awesome with some tomato sauce. And this is just tomatoes, um, prosciutto, and a mozzarella ball with a little bit of a basil drizzle. I knew yeah, you were going for that one. Yeah. Skewers. Skewers. These are great.